Jesus, great is your faithfulness, Lord. We give you praise today and always. Father, we thank you for a time like this. We thank you for another opportunity to be at your feet, Lord. We thank you because your presence has never left us and it will never leave us. So therefore, Lord, we're giving you back all praise, Lord. We're giving you back all praise to you, Jehovah. And we pray today, Lord, that as we start the service, Lord, as we come and take over, Holy Spirit, define, so Lord, define your ministry angels, so Lord, from the praise of worship to the word that you have to us today. Father, the words will not fall on the hard rock, Lord. It will fall on the deep, fat grass, Lord. People will hear your word and they will know that you are God. You have always been God, Lord Jesus. You will come and touch, so Lord Jesus. Anyone professional thinking, oh, should I go online or not, Lord, give them reason to connect the Lord. Connect the people that need to hear your word today, Lord. Connect them today in the mighty name of Jesus. Abba, Father, we trust in you for your grace. We're talking, we're trusting you for your mercy. We're trusting you for deliverance. We're trusting you for breakthrough, Lord. We know all this you can do. And I will commit your son into your everywhere, Lord. Fresh anointing, Lord Jesus. Fresh anointing, Lord Jesus, upon him. You always be there with him, Lord. Today I trust and I know you will continue to be with him, Lord Jesus. Let your name alone be praised in all the way. At the end of the day, we will come together and give you praise uh, forever, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you are good and your mercy is enduring forever, eh, Lord. We give you praise. We give you honor. Your mercy, Lord Jesus. Glorify your holy name. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for every listening here today. Father, you will give them reason to listen more on you in the mighty name of Jesus. As we worship, Lord, let your worship rise, Lord. Let your blessings come in on every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. King of glory, we bless your holy name. You are great, Lord Jesus. Our heart sings whole to you. Our soul sings praises to you. Our mind sings praises to you. Father, we cannot describe your greatness. We cannot compare your love, Lord. We cannot tear off your goodness, Lord. All we just have to say is whole. Oh, oh, great is your mercy, Lord. Great is your great. Great is your faithfulness, Jehovah. You are great forever in the mighty name of Jesus. Abba, Father, hello, Emmanuel. Be thou exalted, Jehovah. Be thou exalted, Jehovah. Great is your faithfulness, O oh Lord. Abba, Father, we worship you. Jehovah, we worship you. Receive our praise, Lord. Receive our worship, Lord. Receive our praise, Lord. Receive our worship, Lord. Your praise will forever be in our lips, O oh Lord. Your praise will forever be in our mind, Lord Jesus. Father, we praise you. We praise you. We praise you, Jehovah. We praise you, Savior. Be thou exalted, Lord. Be thou exalted, Lord. Our hearts sing to you, Jesus. Our hearts sing to you, Jesus. <clears throat> thank you, Lord. Thank you, Savior. Thank you. And my heart sing, whole. holy is your name, Jesus. Our hearts sing, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> oh. God has 
Jesus, we sing to you, Savior. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won the victory.
Blessed be the name of the Lord, the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. Hallowed be your name, Jesus, O the Lion and the Lamb, the, the Ancient of Days, the God who does not change, the miracle-working God, the Waymaker. We worship you. We bow before your throne. We give you all the honor and all the glory that is due to you alone. To you be all the glory and praise this morning. Thank you for an awesome time of worship. Thank you for your presence in our lives. Thank you for your provision, for your protection, for your divine supplies, for your guidance. Thank you for all you have done. 
Blessed be your name forever. We've come before you this morning to receive your word. Holy Spirit, I ask that you minister to each and every one watching right now and those who will watch hereafter. Cause them to receive a word of grace, a word of encouragement, a word of comfort, a word of breakthrough, a word of deliverance, a restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Meet everyone at their area of need. We pray for the spirit of revelation knowledge to rest upon us right now. Thank you, Father. We we'll bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship. Amen, amen, and amen. Let's put those hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Wherever you are watching us all over the world, I, want, I bring greetings to you, and I want to say welcome to Breath of Life Church. This is where lives are changed, and we are here to bring life to our community. And if you do be with us online, I want to say we are glad to have you here. Thank you for being a part of today's service. And may the Lord bless and increase you on all sides. In the name of Jesus. third installment of the message so today's message is titled dealing with hindrances part three and so hindrances to what hindrance to the fulfillment of God's vision hindrance to the fulfillment of your dreams your desires your aspirations hindrances to the fulfillment or the satisfaction of your success goals your progress in life in ministry and your next level in God now, individual ex uh, individuals experience various, I mean, disparate hindrances in life. Some of them, some of them were, you know, hindrances. Uh, these hindrances have various sources. Some of them from the devil. Uh, some of them from fear and so on and so forth. Now, there are ten sources of hindrances I want to share with. Ten sources of hindrances I want to share with, with us. I've already shared four uh, uh, in the last two weeks talking about Satan, sin, fear, and enemies. And uh, today I'll be sharing with you the remaining six sources of hindrance. Now, for Paul the Apostle, it was Satan who hindered him from fulfilling his desire of visit visiting the church in Thessalonica. You can find that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 17 and 18. For the children of Israel, the older generation, were hindered from entering the promised land because of fear, hindrance generated by fear. For Adam and Eve, sin hindered them from eating from the tree of life and blocked their access to the Garden of Eden. And then to the sons of Israel, uh, the sons of Israel were hindered from peace and prosperity by their enemies for several years until they cried out to God and God raised Gideon, a judge, as their deliverer. You can find this in Judges chapter 6, verse 3. In fact, the Bible says in verse 6 that the children of Israel were so impoverished because the Midianites, uh, because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried out to God. I mean, the, the, the words put in so much effort, they will sow seeds, they will plant vineyards, but the Amalekites will come with the Amalekites and uh, with the sons of the east, and the Bible says they will destroy the produce of the earth and leave no sustenance for the, in Israel, as well as no sheep, ox, or donkey. And so as a result of that, the children of Israel were living in abject poverty because of what their enemies did to them. So their enemies were a source of hindrance to them. But I pray today that the Lord will give you victory over all your enemies. And God will certainly contend against those who contend against you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, while some hindrances are caused by Satan... Other hindrances could be self-inflicted. So I want to talk to you about the fifth source of hindrance, which number one, which is devourers. Now this happens as a result of ignorance or lack of covenant practice. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, the Bible says, Bring the full tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. 
Test me in days, says the Lord of hosts, and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out for you blessing without measure. Now, verse 11 says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, so that it will not destroy the fruits of your land, and the vine in your field will not fail to produce fruit. Can you adjust this? I can hear some echo. Leave it the way it was before. So, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and it will not destroy the fruit of your land, and the vine in your field will not fail to produce fruit, says the Lord of hosts. Now, devourers are a source of hindrance. Now, this, this devourer came as a result of the people not practicing covenant, uh, the covenant of tithe. You see, the Bible's God said, he said, try me in this. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour down a blessing, God added, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Now, the devourer could come in form of, you know, in the area of your finances, in your health, in your, uh, you know, could be your career, your job, your, uh, it can come in diverse forms. And what these devourers do is they bring harassment to one's life. Now, tithing is our covenant shield of protection against devourers. The Israelites forsook the Lord and the Midianites oppressed them really hard until they repented. Devourers come, like I said, they come in various forms and sometimes some unexpected, unexplainable, unfavorable circumstances happen in life that brings, brings so much pain and sorrow to us. Some of these things could come, uh, could be, because they could actually be devourers. But I want to say to you that one of the ways for the covenant provision that God has made available to his children is tithing. Tithing is not a law. It predates the law. So don't allow those who lack sound biblical knowledge to mislead you that tithing is an Old Testament practice, therefore no longer relevant in the New Testament. The very first time tithing was practiced in the Bible, it was received by Jesus himself in the person of Melchizedek, king of Salem. And the Bible says, and Abraham gave a tithe of all. He willingly gave, he willingly gave to honor God, and in return, God became his shield and reward. Please turn your Bibles with me to the book of Genesis chapter 14, verse 17 to 24. Genesis 14, 17 to 24. The Bible says, Then after his return from the defeat of Kedalaoma and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Shaveh, that is the king's valley, verse 18. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, now the word, the name Melchizedek means king of righteousness and Salem means peace. So here we have the king of righteousness and the king of peace and that is Jesus. He's the prince of peace. He is our righteousness. And the Bible says he brought out bread and wine, which signifies communion. Now he was the priest of God most high. He was the priest, not a priest. The priest of God Most High. In those days, the priesthood had not even been formed. But the Bible says he was a priest of God Most High. Verse 19. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. And verse 20 says, And blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And the later part says, and he gave him a tenth of all. That was the first time tithe was mentioned in the Bible. New King James Version says he gave him a tithe of all. Now for Abraham, Abraham won the battle not because of his prowess, but because of God's faithfulness, because of God's providence. He won the battle. And then he gave the tithe in recognition that God gave him that victory. 
So in other words, your tithe is a recognition and a reminder that your accomplishments, your earnings, and your success is not a function of your prowess, but a function of God's providence. If God does not build a house, the laborers, they build in vain. If the Lord does not watch over the city, the watchmen, they watch in vain. So if the Lord does not bless you, you know, the, the vain is the labor of man. And so in Genesis, in, so in that scripture, we can see that Abraham acknowledged God and nobody forced Abraham to give. He gave from his heart as a means to recognize God's faithfulness in his life. Another time the title was mentioned is in the book of Genesis 28, verse 16 to 22. Jacob had an encounter with God. And, you know, in verse 16, the Bible says, Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And so Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on its top. And he called the name of that place Bethel. However, previously the name of the city had been Luz. And then Jacob made a vow saying, If God will bring me and keep me on this journey that I take and will give me food to eat and garments to wear, and I return to my father's house in safety, then the Lord will be my God. And this stone which I have reject, which I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will surely give a taste to you. So we can see how tithing was practiced here. Uh, you know, it's not a law. He gave it freely and also he did it as a form of honor to God in recognition of God's protection, God's vision to him, God's faithfulness. And that's what the Bible says, honor the Lord with your substance and the, with the first fruit of your increase. It is honor. It is honor to honor God in recognition of what he has done for you. And in return, God, God in return, God shields you or he shields us from the devourer and also he gives access to us. The Bible says, he said, the Bible says the gift of a man will make room for him. The, looking at that scripture is not actually referring to talents and potentials. And, and uh, the Bible, when the Bible says the gift of a man makes room, the gift uh, is literally gifts that makes room. That's what the Bible says when Jacob wanted to appear before Esau, his brother, he sent gifts ahead of him. And that gift certainly made room for Jacob to be able to appear before Esau. So your gift, your titan will make room. Your tithe will make room for you. It is honor, like I said, and recognition of God's sustenance. And in return, the Bible says, honor the Lord with your substance, in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9, and with the first fruit of all your crops. And then the Bible says, in return, verse 10, so your bands will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. There's always a blessing that comes with it. I'm spending so much time on it on this because many people have listened to junks and these junks have polluted their minds, corrupted their minds, and some of them have been hindered from manifesting the blessings of God. Can I say to you that Titan is not compulsory? However, those who know the benefits of it will reap the fruit of it. The, so the Bible says, so your bands will be filled with plenty. The word plenty is from the root word savar in Hebrew language, which means to be satisfied. In other words, God is saying you'll be satisfied in every area of your life and your vats will overflow with new wine. In other words, the vats that talks about reservoir, it will burst with new wine. Hallelujah. God said, try me in this. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour down a blessing which your storehouses will not be able to contain. And then I will re re rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Hallelujah. This is the entitlement of those who practice this covenant of tithing. And you can do warfare with it. If you have been faithful, you're paying your tithe. You can stand toe to toe against the devourer and say, this is what God has said. It, it is an agreement. The reason why it is a covenant is this. You do your own part and watch God do his own part by, by 
opening the windows of heaven to pour down a blessing and also to rebuke the devourer for your sake. For Adam, for, for, for Abraham, God said to him, if we go to back to Genesis chapter 14, after Abraham had given God a tithe of all, look at chapter 15, verse 1. After these things, what things? The experience where Abraham gave a tithe of all to God, and of course his encounter with the king of Sodom, saying to the king of Sodom, I will not take anything from you, lest you will think that king, the king of Sodom made Abraham rich. So Ab Abraham was telling them that, see, I recognize that God is indeed the source of my wealth. And verse 1 says, so after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, do not fear, Abraham. I am a shield to you and your reward shall be very great. God is saying, I'm your shield of protection against the devourer and your reward will be very great. In other words, that speaks of blessing. And so it is, a, a, one is shielded from all forms of harassment from the enemy. It could be blackmail. It could be harassment in your place of work. It could be harassment in your health, in your, in your health, in your career. Whatever it is, God said, I will put an end to that devourer. Amen. And just in case you are not convinced that Jesus was Melchizedek or Melchizedek was Jesus. If we go to the book of Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 1 to 3. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 1 to 3. If you're getting blessed, say amen. It says, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham as he was returning from the slaughter of the kings, blessed him to whom also Abraham apportioned a tithe of all the spoils, was first of all, by the translation of his name, king of righteousness, and then also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Verse 3, without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the son of God, he remains a priest perpetually. And then to further solidify this point, if you go to John chapter 8, verse 56 to 58, Jesus speaking here, oh, this is so exciting. Jesus speaking here, he said here that, um, Jesus said, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and he was glad. And so the Jews said to him, you're not yet even 50 years old. And have you seen Abraham? And Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was born, I am. And therefore they picked up stones to throw him, but Jesus hid himself and went away from the temple. Jesus, before Abraham was, I am. In other words, Abraham saw Jesus. And before Abraham was, before he was born, Jesus already existed. So Jesus was the one who saw, who encountered, who, who, um, who saw Abraham, or Jesus was there, uh, was Melchizedek, and the, that first encounter with him, Abraham gave him the tithe of all. And so whether to say that tithing should be done in the Old Testament, uh, is only done in the Old Testament, and uh, should it be done in the New Testament, is an irrelevant question, because neither the Old Testament or New Testament, it is neither an Old Testament or a New Testament order, uh, or ordinance. In fact, if we go to the book of Acts chapter 4, verse 36 to 32, the Bible says the apostles, they gave more than tithes. In the, the believers then gave more than tithes. They gave their all to God. First, um, Acts chapter 4, verse 32 to, to 36. And the congregation of those who believed there were of one heart and soul. And not one of them claimed that anything belonging to him was his own. All things were common property to them. And with great power, the apostles were giving testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and abundant grace was upon them all. Verse 34, and for there was not a needed person among them, for all who were owners of land and houses will sell them and bring the proceeds of the sales and lay them at the apostles' feet, and they would distribute, they di would distribute to each one according to their needs. So we can see here, can I say to you that your tithe is not a donation? Your tithe is not a contribution towards a project, no. 
Your tithe is a gift to God in recognition of his faithfulness in your life. And listen, your tithe is not your your tithe is sacred and it is given in the place where God has designated, namely in God's house. And God appoints people to namely the priest to collect the tithes on his behalf. If it is not done under these circumstances, if you are giving to other projects, thinking that you are giving tithes to God, that is not tithes. Those are just donations or contributions towards a good cause. But your tithes must be given to in a, to God in a designated place, collected by the persons that God has appointed to do so. Amen. Now, the sixth source of hindrance is discouragement. First Kings chapter nineteen, verse one to eight. First Kings chapter nineteen, verse one to eight. We're looking at hindrances here today. Just remember what the Bible says about, um, I think, in the book of Joel chapter 2, when the Bible says that I will restore unto you the years that the ca- ca- caterpillars have eaten, the counter worm, the uh, palmer worms, the caterpillars, and, and all this army that I sent before you, I will restore them unto you. Now, those things were actually devourers. And those, without this covenant, sorry, I'm going again to tighten because it's so strong in my spirit that so many people are under satanic afflictions because they've robbed themselves of of the blessing of tithe and because they rob themselves of the blessing of the protection that God gives because they are not faithful in this area. But I pray for you that God will grant you the grace to renew your commitment and be faithful in your gift towards God. And in the name of Jesus, I stand as God's servant and I declare that in the name of Jesus, God of heaven will rebuke the devourer for your sakes in the name of Jesus. Every devourer is exterminated, is is removed from your life right now in the name of Jesus. And because of your obedience, the windows of heaven shall be opened over you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The sixth source of hindrance is discouragement. If you go to 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 1 to 8. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 1 to 8. Now Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So may the gods do to me and even more if I do not make your life as the life of, of them by tomorrow about this time and he was afraid and arose and ran for his life and came to Beersheba which belongs to Judah and left his servant there but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat under a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might die and said it is now it is enough now O Lord take my life for I'm no better than my father's Verse 5, and he lay down and slept under a juniper tree. And behold, there was an angel touching, there was an angel touching him and said to him, Arise, eat. Then he looked and behold, there was at his head a bread, uh, a bread cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came a second time to, and touched him and said, Arise, eat, because the journey is too great for you. And so he arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of that food for 40 days and 40 nights to hold up the mountain of God. Now we all know Elijah, that Elijah was a powerful man of God, one of the major prophets in the Bible. This man called down, called fire down from heaven and fire came and consumed the sacrifice. On two occasions, he called fire down from heaven to consume armies that were sent to Aram. This same prophet killed all the prophets of Baal right in the presence of king of the king, King Ahab. But as soon as Jezebel, the wife of the king, sent a threatening message to Elijah, the Bible says Elijah ran for his life. And he got to a certain place where he said, Lord, take my life. I know I'm no better than my father's. At this point, Elijah was discouraged. At this point, Elijah was under so much distress. He was he felt so depressed that he thought of committing suicide. Now, that was Elijah the Great. 
uh, the, the great prophets. He said that, that shows that the best of men are still men at their very best. So, uh, we all have our weak points. There are times when we all get discouraged. Like somebody said that, like somebody said, many of the great achievements of, of the world were accomplished by tired and discouraged people. But who kept on working? You see, discouragement is part of life. It comes. But what you do when you get discouraged it will determine how far you will go in life. The Bible says at this point, Elijah was communing with God. Even though he was, he, he, he was, it sounded like he wanted to commit suicide, but this was a conversation between him and God. And that is to tell us that whenever we feel discouraged, you no, know, that's not the time to be lamenting and, you know, to be talking to, yes, sometimes we pour out our hearts to people, but before you pour your heart to people, talk to God first because he's a sustenance, because he's a very present help. In time of need. The Bible says that those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Not those who wait upon men. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Elijah at this point was under so much distress. That I wanted to understand that Jezebel sent a threatening message to, 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 to Elijah. Now, Jezebel here is a spirit. That's what we call the spirit of Jezebel. And the spirit of Jezebel is a threatening spirit to bring, to cause harassment, to cause harassment, to cause you distress, depression, discouragement, and distraction. If you can get discouraged, if you allow yourself to be distracted and come under distress, clearly you will get distracted and you will not be able to progress with your life vision. Therefore, it becomes a source of hindrance. And this harassment could come in various areas of our lives. It could come as from one's employer. It could come from your academics, your career, your health, from opposition, even from your past mistakes, deaths, financial difficulties, and so on. But I pray for you today that may the Lord silence every voice of harassment in your life. In the name of Jesus, every financial harassment will come to an end today. The Lord will make a way where there seems to be no way. I doubt voices of opposition. The Bible says God will give you a mouth and a wisdom which your adversary will not be able to resist nor gainsay. I pray today that the God will silence the voice of Jezebel over your life in the name of Jesus. Elijah was burnt out. He was discouraged. Meanwhile, God had a mission for him to anoint two kings, one over Syria and the other over Israel, and then a prophet in his place. Now, for Elijah to get discouraged, you see, Elijah got discouraged, but thank God that whilst he prayed, he fell asleep, and then an angel came and gave him bread and water. And this, he was so exhausted that the angel had to do it twice. And the Bible says he walked in the strength of that food for 40 days and 40 nights. I pray for you that may you find nourishment in the word you are hearing right now in the name of Jesus. This word is indeed food. And I pray that it will nourish your spirit. It will bring spiritual nourishment to you. You will find comfort in this word. You will find courage in this word. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. David said, and he said in Psalm 61 verse 2, is that from the ends of the earth, I will cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I am. When my heart is overwhelmed with disappointment, with haters and challenges, health conditions and depression and failures and financial difficulties or even the loss of a dear one. When my heart is overwhelmed, Lord, please lead me to the rock that is higher than I, that, that I, 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 that, 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 than I am. I pray that this day may you find solace and comfort in the hands, in the mighty hands of God. God in the name of Jesus. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, hallelujah, 1 Samuel chapter 30, we were told about David, how he got discouraged. The Bible says then it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had made a raid on the, on the Negev and on Ziklag and had overthrown Ziklag and burned it with fire. And they took captive the women and all who were in, in it, both small and great without killing anyone, carried them off and went their way. 
Now when David and his men came to the city, behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. Verse 4. Then David and the people who were with him lifted their voices and wept until there was no strength to weep again. Now, these were mighty men. These were warriors. The Bible says they wept until they had no strength to weep anymore. Why? Because they were under so much distress. They were discouraged. Verse 5 says, Now, David's two wives had been taken captive. And Ahinoam, the Jezreelite, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelites. Moreover, David was greatly distressed because the people spoke of stoning him, for all the people were embittered, each one because of his sons and daughters. But, hallelujah, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Oh, may, I pray that may, may you find strength in this world today in the name of Jesus. Whenever you feel discouraged, I want you to encourage yourself in the Lord. I want you to strengthen yourself in the Lord. And David went to God. He went to God to pray because in the place of prayer, we find strength. In the place of prayer, we find courage. Prayer makes you remain just power available. And so David went to God in verse 7 and David said to Abiatia, Abiatha, the priest, the son of Ahimelech, please bring me the effort and so Abiathar brought the effort to David, and David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this band? Shall I overtake them? And the Lord said to him, Pursue, for you will surely overtake, and you will surely recover all. Hallelujah. I'm jumping in my spirit right now, because this is the word for someone here today. And the Lord is saying to you, You shall surely pursue, you will overtake, and you will recover all in the name of Jesus. If someone is standing next to me, high five, Tell them, pursue, overtake, and recover all. Pursue, overtake, and recover all in the name of Jesus. It is not time to be discouraged. The journey ahead of you is far and is great. You need strength right now to be able to overcome all the obstacles, all the challenges, all the disappointments. You can overcome them. You can accomplish great things. Your best days are still ahead of you. Therefore, don't feel discouraged like David did. The Bible says he strengthened his himself in God and may the Lord grant you strength today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. Now the source, the seventh source of hindrance can be found in first Psalm of um, first Kings 19, 15 to 21. First Kings still on the story of Elijah. First Kings 19 verse 15 to 21. Then the Lord said to him, Go. Return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel king over Aram, uh, that is Syria, and verse 16, and Jehu the son of Nimshi, you shall anoint king over Israel. And Elisha the son of Shaphat of Abel Mehola, you shall anoint as prophet in your place. It shall come about that the one who escapes from the sword of Jehazel, Jehu shall put to death. And the one who escapes the sword of, El of Jehu, Elisha shall put to death. Let's go to verse 19. And so he departed there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, while he was plying with twelve periods of oxen before him and he with the twelfth. And Elijah passed over to him and threw his mount mantle on him and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Please let me kiss my father and my mother, then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? So he returned from following him and took a pair of oxen and sacrificed them and bored their flesh with the implements of the oxen and gave it to the people and they ate. And then he arose and followed Elijah and ministered to him. You see, what if Elisha had said that I've never been a prophet? I've known this field and this area of expertise for so long a time. I'm established in this field. I don't see any reason why I should leave the unknown to the known to the unknown, to leave the familiar for the unfamiliar. So Elisha could have said no. But that would have become a great hindrance to him from fulfilling his destiny. So the seventh source of hindrance here is maintaining the status quo. Sometimes God may be calling you to a higher height. 
to a new level, to a new place, to an unfamiliar territory. And sometimes because we are used to our comfort zone, we want to remain where we are. And we could use that to sort of change our, our, our destiny. Now, there were 12 ox, pairs of oxen that Elijah was, you know, Elisha was, was, was driving. In fact, it was common practice in those days for several teams of oxen, each with his own plow and, and driver, driving. to walk together in a row. And so Elisha was on the twelfth one. Now he was an expert in that field. But God had a greater plan for him. Elisha was meant to be the successor of the great prophet Elijah. Now the question is this. What if there's a higher call for you? You know in your heart that there's a higher call for you. You know in your heart that God has a better plan for you. And just like God said to Abraham... Abraham, depart, Genesis chapter 12, depart from your country, from your relatives, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. God called Abraham from the known to the unknown, a land that I will show you. And the Bible says Abraham did not remain in that, in in that, that comfort zone. He stepped out by faith. Listen, it takes faith to leave the familiar for the unfamiliar. It takes faith to leave the known for the unknown. It takes faith to step into a new territory and begin to navigate a new area. And I pray that God will, will you will hear the voice of God and the Lord will grant you the grace to be able to heed that call to step onto higher height in the mighty name of Jesus. You see, there are individuals who get stuck in life, who get stuck behind dumb and dumb jobs, dumb career because you, you know, and you've been there for so long in time and because they are unable to adapt and yield to the next call of God in their lives, they get stuck. Listen, purpose is transient and so as we progress in our destiny, to, uh, to de progress in, 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 in our destiny, our purpose evolves. And you and I must be willing to surrender to the promptings of the Holy Spirit and to make certain moves. As God said to Abraham, get out. And immediately Abraham heard the voice of God. He left that place. You see, the fear of change, the fear of the unknown will make people remain or make them maintain the status quo. You have learned certain skills, established in certain areas of expertise, but you know in your heart that God is leading you into something else. You can't explain it, you can't describe it, you can't articulate it, but the thing is, you've got to work with the light that you have right now. Usually God does not give details. He said to Abraham, depart to the land that I will show you. But he will give you sufficient light for you to work with and work with that light. Until you make that move, you won't hear the direction for the next one. You will receive the instruction for the next one. So make that move first. So when people ask, you see, when I'm, I'm not sure what Elisha explained to his family, to his parents, or to his business partners, because how would he be able to articulate to them that he will be following Elijah around, washing the hands or ministering to Elisha? He had a job, he had something, a means of income, but God had called him to begin to, to the office of, the pro, of a prophet and he would have to follow Elijah everywhere. But he obeyed. Would you be like Paul who said in Philippians chapter, chapter 3 verse 13 to 14, he said, one thing I do, Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press towards the mark, the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Listen, there's an upward call for your life. And you have to be willing to take that bold step. You have to be willing to take that bold step. Your current success is now history. Don't camp around for so long. Ask God for what is next. Go is the enemy of great. Sometimes what used to be a blessing could end up becoming a hindrance if we don't know how and when to transition to another level. 
Egypt was for once, once upon a time a blessing to Israel. But because they lingered for so long, it became a curse to them. If you linger, you litter. If you don't move with the cloud, you will be left behind. So I want to encourage you, don't let where you are right now, your current place become a hindrance unto you. Don't camp around that success for too long. Ask God, God, where is my next level? And the Bible says an angel, the, uh, uh, an angel said to him, come up here and I will show you things that must happen. And the Bible says initially the door opened before him, a great door in heaven, and the angel said to him, come up here and I will show you things that will happen after this you have to step up say to your neighbor step up hallelujah amen amen now one of the things i want to draw your attention to is verse 20 of first kings 19 the bible says and he left the ox oxen and ran after elijah and said uh, and ran after elijah listen elijah was the future of elisha and so Elijah, Elisha had to run after his future. To run them means that he exerted more energy. To, he, to run them means that he was focused, he was determined, he was convinced beyond every reasonable doubt that this man was his future. Listen, your vision is your future. Your current job may not be, may not be your future. Therefore, be smart to know what you need to pursue and what investment you need to make. Start investing in into your future, start investing into your vision. Anything can happen, especially now where COVID-19 is causing a lot of redundancies. People are losing their jobs left, right, center. You've got to ask God, God, what have you called me to do? Listen, the place of assignment is a place of power. The place of assignment is a place of, 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 of provision. God will always make provision in the place of vision. And so, in verse 21, Elisha Sacrifice a pair of oxen. He bought it. He used the implement of the oxen to burn, to, 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 to prepare the meal. And he distributed it to the people. And then he left them. He kissed them goodbye. And then I would say, you know what? I'm done with this current life. I want to pursue my future. I want to pursue my destiny. I want to pursue my vision. I don't know if someone is saying that to himself right now. You know what? I want to put everything aside. I want to pursue my vision. I'm not saying you should quit your job now. But what I'm trying to try to say to you is that whilst you are doing your job, begin to invest in your future. Begin to invest in your in God's assignment for your life. Begin to invest in it. And one, there comes in time whereby you know you are established in that area of assignment. You can quit your job and keep focusing on that area of assignment or sometimes your job could even be well aligned with your purpose and that way you are pursuing you know both of them have become intertwined that is the place we ought to be hallelujah amen so you've got to be sold out to your vision now eight source of hindrance this one i'll be quick with the remaining three i i, I felt in my spirit that i needed to spend time on the the first Three, which I've already done. So this, I've got the remaining three that I want to share with you. Now, the eighth source of hindrance is background, one's background or one's disability. In Luke chapter 19, verse 1 to 10, we all know the story of a man called Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a man of a small stature. And whilst other people were looking for Jesus, people could see Jesus. But this man, because of his stature, he could not see him. And the Bible says, one, it says that he went, saw a tree, a sycamore tree, he climbed the tree, and then he was able to see Jesus. And Jesus turned to Zacchaeus and said, Zacchaeus, rejoice for salvation has come to your house today. I will be lodging with you tonight. Listen, some people have been disadvantaged by reason of their background, their race, their country, or even disability. But Zacchaeus did not allow his disability, well, his, uh, his uh, what's it called, his, I mean, his stature was clearly not a disability, don't get me wrong, you know, his stature was clearly not a disability, although he was short, and because of short, he felt as though he was disadvantaged, and therefore he needed to look for a leverage. Listen, God, anything that happens to you in life, your background, your stature, your color, your race, should never be a source of hindrance. 
If you think it's going to be a hindrance to you, then it will be a hindrance. You've got to rise above it. You've got to look beyond what seemingly looks like a hindrance to you. You've got to look above it and look for a leverage right to, 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 to stand upon. We are told about the story of Ray Charles. Ray Charles was blind in his two eyes at the age of seven, destitute, uneducated, a blind African-American. At the age of 14, he was orphaned. How would this young man survive? But listen, before he died, he won 17 Grammy Awards. He could fly an aircraft. He made, he became successful in life, all to the glory of God. He did not allow his disability, his background to become a hindrance unto him. Say to yourself, I will never allow my background, my race, my, my disability, whatever it is, my level of education, no, nothing will become a hindrance unto me in the name of Jesus. Listen, the only disability that can hinder you is your mind for as a man thinks in his heart so is he if you think you are disabled if you think you are, you are disabled then you are disabled in fact disability of the mind mental disability is worse than physical disability and when i say mental i'm talking about the capacity to think the capacity to be creative the capacity to birth ideas if one is disabled in those areas of uh, in that faculty it is worse than physical disability Hallelujah. So I pray that in the mighty name of Jesus, may God help to find the leverage by engaging your talents, your gifts, your abilities to be able to rise above all forms of hindrances and limitations in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The ninth source of hindrance is bad attitude. Bad attitude and um, I also call this borrowed personality. Let's deal with bad attitude first of all. You see, a bad attitude can become a hindrance. In Joshua chapter 14, verse 24, God said, But my servant Caleb had a different attitude. While others were saying, Oh, we cannot enter the promised land because we're like grasshoppers in our eyes. And but God said, Concerning Caleb, he had a different attitude. You see, a bad attitude is like a flat tire. It will keep you grounded until you change it. Nabal of the husband of Abigail had a terrible attitude. In 1 Samuel chapter 25, verse 4 to 38, is a long read. You can read it in your own time. He was sharing his sheep, and he, he was quite a wealthy man, a well-to-do man, but he was also a foolish man. And so when David heard that he was sharing his sheep, David wanted to, you know, help him. At that point, David, David needed help. And so David needed him to, like, at least support him with some items because the man could afford it. But look at what he said. He disrespected David. He insulted David, and David was angry when he heard this. And David wanted to take matters into his hand to, 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 to eliminate the man. But the wife, wife, the wife of Nabal, Abigail, quickly took items. You see, she put gifts together, and that gift actually made room for her. You remember when the Bible said the gift of a man will make room for him? She put items together ran towards David and gave those items to David and she spoke and convinced David not to take matters into his hand. And she even prophesied to David that when David becomes king, David should remember her. And indeed, when David became king, David remembered Abigail and Abigail became queen. He became, she became the, uh, the wife of David. In fact, after that incident, 10 days after, Nabal died of stroke. Why? His bad attitude limited him. Imagine if David, if he had helped David, and if David had become, I mean, of course, David became king, David would remember him. We all know the kind of person David was. David remembered the wife who showed kind gesture towards him. David sent for her, and she became David's wife. And so bad attitude, bad behavior, bad relationship, a bad attitude can limit you or become a source of hindrance. Are we still together? Amen. Another story we need to bear in mind, which I call borrowed personality, what I mean by that is trying to become who you are not. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 38 to 40, the Bible told us about David when he wanted to fight Goliath. The king gave him his own armor, and David tried it. And he tried to work in it, and he said, I cannot work, wear this because 
it has not been tested. Let me verse 39. 1 Samuel 17, 39 says, And David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to work, for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, No, 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 I cannot work with this, for I have not tested them. So David took them off and he went to his sling to use it. Hallelujah. And so David did not try to become somebody else. He maintained his original. Listen, there is something unique about you. There's always a grace for your place. You find your place and stay in your place. And the grace that God has made available for that place will become will, will, will be evident upon your life. Don't try to be uh, to become another person. Trying to become another person makes you a photocopy. You lose yourself that way. Be original. Hallelujah. And the last one is this. The last source of hindrance is lack of resources. In John chapter 5, verse 1 to 8, we all know the story of the man by the pool of Bethesda. The Bible says this man, he had been there for 38 years. And when Jesus asked him, would you like to be made whole? The man said, but Lord, I lack a man. He lacked human resource. And Jesus healed him. He said, take your bed and go home. Jesus healed him. Now, because of lack of human resource, lack of helpers, this person was hindered for 38 years. I pray for you that in the name of Jesus, that every help you need will locate you in the name of Jesus. But I've actually been stagnant for, or you've remained in that place for so long a time, and that's because you need helper. David said, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence come my help? My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Today the Lord has rem remembered you, and he will self help you, send help your way. Your help is on its way in the mighty name of Jesus. Do not lose hope. Do not lose your expectation. Help is on the way, and your help will meet you at that area of, your helper will meet you at that area of need in the mighty name of Jesus. Is that sometimes the help you need is not money. It's people. And sometimes, of course, it could be money, but the sin is every help that you need, God will send in your way in the name of Jesus. Again, Jesus needed to feed 5,000 people. And and uh, somebody said, we only have five loaves of bread and two fishes. And Jesus said, that's okay. He took those items. He blessed, he gave thanks, blessed them, blessed the items, and he gave to the people. And the Bible says they, were, they all ate and they were all fed. Uh, 5,000 men excluded the children and the women. And they had 12 baskets of leftovers. Jesus did not perform. The miracle was based on a small resource, but at least there was a resource for him to work with. So lack of resource could be a source of hindrance. I pray for you that God, you, you see, you need a miracle. If you don't have resource at all, what you need is a miracle. And listen, God, no matter how small what you have, you see, that little is sufficient for God to work with. Remember that woman, with, with that, that widow whose sons were meant to be taken uh, as slaves. The Bible says that she said, but I have a small bottle of oil. And the servant of God said, take that oil and borrow vessels from your neighbor and lock herself inside and begin to pour. That small item was a resource that she had. And because, thank God, all along she had despised it, but the prophet opened her eyes to see the power in that resource. Listen, God may have even given you something, but because you despise that thing, that resource, that, that because you despise it, it has become a source of hindrance to you. Begin to pray and ask God that God draw my attention, draw my attention and put my eyes to those resources you have made available that I don't recognize. Cause me to begin to recognize them today. And that could be the source or that could be the beginning of your break through. Don't despise that talent. Don't despise that gift. Don't despise that resource that God has made available. Take it and give thanks to him and the blessings of God will rest upon it. Hallelujah. And so we've looked at 10 sources of hindrances and I pray that in the name of Jesus, no matter what the hindrance will be today, could be that by the power of the Holy Spirit, that hold is broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. You see, in two weeks and the last Sunday of this month, uh, the last Sunday of this month, we're going to be having an anointing service. 
The Bible says, by the reason of the anointing, the burden shall be lifted and the yoke shall be destroyed. Every yoke of limitation, every yoke of hindrance, every burden that the enemy has placed on your shoulders, by the anointing, they shall be lifted in the name of Jesus and your breakthrough shall reach, shall be in view. Your breakthrough shall reach your hands in the mighty name of Jesus. So I want to encourage you, Two Sundays from now, do not miss it. It's the last Sunday of this month. It is an, it's actually anointing and communion service, double barrel. So don't miss it. And I trust God that the Lord will keep us till then in the name of Jesus. Amen. We've come to the end of today's message. I know that you have been blessed. I have been blessed and I will go back to listen to the message again and again. And I, I pray that the God of heaven will continue to increase and multiply you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. It's time to honor the Lord with our substance. You know, your tithe, your offering, whatever you give, you want to give to him. Remember, it is honor. You're honoring God with your tithes. You are giving your, your, your gifts to him. And so do it with cheerfulness. The Bible says when we give, we should not give as a matter of necessity. Don't give grudgingly. Don't give as a matter of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to, able to make all grace abound towards you, that you have a sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. As we give, may the Lord bless and increase you abundantly in the mighty name of Jesus. Our accounts are being displayed on the screen right now. So, uh, 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 so by the, uh, as we give, may the Lord will bless and increase you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Now, as a reminder, we'll be back here again on Tuesday, actually on Zoom platform. Uh, we, we hold our prayer meetings on Tuesdays from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. And then on Wednesday, still on Zoom platform, 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then on Sundays, we'll be on Facebook and YouTube live from 10 a.m. to around 11.30. As you saw today, we've introduced a worship session for about 15 to 20 minutes before the word comes. And I know that the Lord will keep us all in the name of Jesus. Once again, thank you for being a part of this service. God bless you. Bye for now and see you next time. Amen.